Question, where's some of the finest freshwater fishing in the world? Answer, in Ontario, Canada. From Sunset Country, through the Algoma region and Superior Country, and everywhere in between, it doesn't really matter what you're chasing. Walleyes, pike, musky, lake trout, crappies, and the list goes on and on. But let's not forget the smallmouth bass, one of the fightingest fish in freshwater, the football-shaped golden mussel that thrives in Ontario waters, especially Dog Lake and Superior Country. If smallmouth bass are your favorite, like they are for us, then Dog Lake Resort is a veritable Disneyland for both numbers and size of bronzeback fun. You're gonna want to put this on your bucket list. On today's Edge, we join Al and Dan Linder as they do what they love to do best, and that's chase springtime smallies on Dog Lake, Ontario. What can be a real hoot as the fish are primed to feed after a long winter, cruising shallow structure looking for their next meal. And along the way, Al and Dan share some presentation and location tips you're not going to want to miss. If early season smallies are on your radar, definitely some good stuff. Let's check in with the boys as they break out the bass here and chase Dog Lake Smallies. Yeah, no, they, these are nice fish. This was really, really fun. There we go. Good one. Beauty. Finally, the rain stopped and we start yeah. catching a few. Just think what will happen if the sun comes out in the oh, next I know. couple of It's going to be lights so. out. Huh? It's going to be lights out. Ooh, big beauty. Look at that. Ooh, nice. Beautiful. Boy, they're dark, ain't they? Yep, on BMC hair jig. That is awesome. Al and I are catching smallmouth up in Ontario. We're staying at Dog Lake Resort right outside of Thunder Bay. And uh, I want Paul to tell you a little history about uh, the Dog Lake and, uh, and the watershed. It's pretty interesting. Well, the resort was established in 1947. Um, I'm the fifth owner here. I purchased it in 2002. It's been around a while. Um, we've actually got some guests that have, uh, that have been coming as long as the resort has been here. Uh, one of them is Bruce Lindbergh. Um, kind of crazy, but that's just, uh, just the kind of people we have here. Yeah, having grown up on the lake, uh, I, I wasn't super familiar with the resort down at this end. Uh, I grew up 18 miles to the south, but uh, I had a childhood friend that had a resort and uh, you know, I, I saw the way they had lived and what, what they had done to make a living. And uh, it was something I always wanted to do. Um, I didn't think this one was ever gonna be attainable because the people that were running it at the time to my knowledge anyway, um, weren't in, in a position to be selling it. I mean, they were clicking along doing, doing what resort owners do. And, um, lo and behold, uh, as luck would have it though, the, uh, they got into a position where they decided to sell and uh, move on to other things. And uh, I was able to put a deal together with them and step in and here I am 17 years later still. Yeah, on uh, Thursday here, um, we're getting ready for our long weekend now. Um, Canada Day, July 1st. So there'll be over 300 people here. Uh, I know we were talking about it at dinner and I made it sound like it was an illustrious thing to be able to remember 300 names. But one of the things I didn't tell you is uh, over 85% of those people are repeat. So some of these people now have been here 27 to 30 years. Um, cabin people that are coming in this week most have been coming at least 12 years. So we do a ton of repeat business. So I really only have to learn probably 50 or 60 new names every year. Um, but with that said, I mean, uh, that is one of the things uh, that I, uh, because I'm hands on, um, I do get to know the people that are here and I always make sure that I, uh, I interact with them. And it's, uh, it's a big place, but it's a small place. I've got 40 acres here, uh, 27 developed. There's 108 campsites. Um, they're basically tucked in behind in a horseshoe. 
Um, they've basically got a separate area that they can use. Uh, I've got nine cabins on a separate beach um, in a horseshoe, basically with uh, uh, 45 beds, fully equipped. Uh, obviously 24 hour power, uh, all the uh, comforts, creature comforts of home. Um, I also operate a 1.7 million acre bear management area out of this resort as well. Uh, it encompasses all of Dog Lake and of course uh, the area around it. It's, uh, it's quite an expansive area. We, uh, we do well with the hunting. We do really well with the hunting here. Yeah, Dog Lake's uh, 500 miles of shoreline, over uh, 60,000 acre, acre uh, in size. Um, we're just full of walleye and uh, smallmouth. Um, works out well, you know, all sizes, all year classes in this lake right now. I mean, we're, we're working on uh, 17 to 21s and of course, uh, biggest one I've seen out of here, 17 and a half pounds. And that was by uh, Bruce Lindbergh, who I uh, referenced earlier. Um, he's caught a lot of the big fish in this lake, but uh, it, 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 it supports a, a huge population and uh, we're, we're able to uh, capitalize on that on a regular basis. The smallmouth have always been here, but one of the things I've noticed is uh, there, there's a lot more people targeting them now, right? So uh, they want to come out, they want to do some walleye fishing. You got your shore lunch, you've got your, uh, your uh, dinner time uh, fish, and then they're going out and they're hitting these smallmouth. We're hitting, uh, we have no problem hitting smallmouth over 21 inches here, so. Um, you get one of those on your line, you know you got something hanging there. So, well, we always say here, you know, if you don't like if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. But uh, we've got the wind thing going with the walleyes. When it's windy, you know, guys are, uh, you know, we got the walleyes piling up in the bays, and guys can hit the walleyes. But uh, we have times when, uh, you know, maybe Mother Nature isn't cooperating, and we don't have that wind and walleye chop going. But that's the perfect time to just get in those back bays and start smacking those smallmouth. I mean, they're everywhere. Uh, fortunate here to have uh, such a great fishery uh, and a large bear management area. So uh, one of the things we offer is combination fishing and hunting. So these, uh, these guys and gals can come in, uh, we'll put them on a black bear. Uh, we normally hunt uh, evenings. So our, our mornings are free to fish. So uh, we've got a spectacular fishery here. We get, uh, get people on, on, on the walleyes in the morning. We got them on uh, black bears in the evening. Um, all of the hunt packages include a boat motor and, and, and your gas for fishing. We want people to get out there. Um, we, we want them to experience what we've got here. And uh, being able to do both is, in my opinion, is just uh, win-win. And uh, lots, of, lots of my bear hunters sometimes, guys, this is a bucket list thing. They come in, they, uh, they do a bear hunt. But uh, I get these guys back year after year. Once they get a taste of this fishing, um, they become customers for life. Well, we're uh, 27 miles northwest of Thunder Bay, which uh, it's uh, about a 45 minute to an hour drive back to town. So uh, if we get inclement weather, you've got a day where uh, it's raining or not conducive to fishing, uh, we can uh, easily get you back into town. Uh, we've got fine dining in there, excellent shopping. There's uh, movie theaters, of course. I mean, all that's right at our fingertips. Uh, there's Old Fort William there, which is a great attraction to see, which Dog Lake happens to be the headwaters for the Kaministiqua River that uh, flows through the Old Fort William and down into Lake Superior. So there's, uh, there's a number of things to do in town. So you can, uh, you're not just stuck out in the middle of no man's land. And, um, we got, we've got it all here. We're in Squatch neighborhood. Squatch watch. Oh. Got him. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Big fish. <laughs> yeah. My oh, hero. Man. Oh boy, oh boy. Nice fish. Oh boy, I can't, can't stop her. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's why we come. That's why we come up north into these Canadian lakes. Yeah, yeah, look at that fish. He's nuts so. He, he's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Get him out of here. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, you got him on the bottom side. He yeah. Hung at it. And yeah, yeah. That's it. A, Whoa. Hang on. Hang on. I'll get that jig out of you. Look at that. Another good one. Uh huh? 
Beautiful. Nice fish, look at that. When they start coming in like this, and you get in the right spot, they, you know, they, they're not rubbed up yet. They're just thinking about coming in and going to bed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, but that's some nice, nice smallmouth, you know, in this part of the world. Yeah, you know, I don't know if some of you that are watching uh, the show, yeah, you know, this would be a bucket trip, a dream trip for a lot of people. You know, if you fly redfish a lot, l l lakes that uh, uh, are loaded with big smallmouth like this, the month of June it is incredible. Dog Lake here has got a number of places that you could go. Paul will put you on the fish. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, uh, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, if it's a bucket list for you, you might want to consider giving Paul or, or, or some of the other camp operators up in this part of the world that we know so well that have a lot of good smallmouth uh, fisheries available. It's some of the best smallmouth fishing in the world all over this part of the world. Yeah, like what Al was saying, we do a lot of trips up into Ontario uh, throughout the year. And one thing that we always do is, is plan for the worst and hope for the best. And you will run into foul weather. And the last couple of years, we've been wearing this blackfish stuff. And I'm not kidding you, I am so happy with this gear. It's built for fishermen by fishermen. I mean, it's, it's uh, flexible, you can uh, do everything. It's bulletproof. I mean, I've sat in torrential downpours and you know when you're sitting like this and that water keeps on cupping right here and soaks through, doesn't do it. As you can see, looking on the hummingbird on the Helix 10, we drop waypoints, obviously, when we're fishing new bodies of water, wherever we catch a fish. I don't care if it's small, medium, or large, we drop a waypoint just so we can remember that we caught a fish there because you could pull back there and there could be a four or five pounder. The other thing too is whenever we come up into any Canadian water, we, we use the, uh, our auto chart live zero lines SD card and we build our own map no matter where we're going on the lake and uh, could come back next year and you'll have a brand, you'll have a fresh map. So it's just really handy, especially when you're running and navigating on these uh, unfamiliar waters. Yeah, it's amazing on, on uh these types of lakes up here. Yeah, you know, with these big, this is a big, 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 big body of water. And, uh, you know, there's so much water that looks good. Yeah, you know, you gotta just find the right habitat. And these fish know they'll migrate from a long, long distance from their wintering spots to where they spawn. And uh, then they break back out into the lake. You know, we found a couple areas with fish. Yeah, 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 you know, big boulders up, up here. Everybody knows the rule if you're hunting smallmouth. Big boulder flats. Big boulder flats find the warmest water you can get. We got a couple areas with, with fish. These fish are a real pretty color in, in here with that dark water. Talking to Paul earlier, and he was saying that these fish, these smallmouth that are in this particular area right now, within a 24 hour uh, time frame will migrate all the way out to the lake. He said it's amazing how fast these fish move in this body of water going from uh, <clears> these areas yeah. to their summering areas. Little guy, little guy. Ah. Oh, damn. Oop. That was a flipper. <laughs> I just love the dark, look at that water, the, the color of those fish because of the water. Aren't they pretty? Look at that. Really, really dark. Yeah, it's amazing how smallmouth bass uh, adapt the different colors uh, of that smallmouth that can come in and change as quick as they, they have to based on environmental issues or environment. Nice one. Again. Came right off that, that log over there. Swimming hair. The ultimate in finesse. Yeah, when they get tough, that's tough to beat. It is. You know what? Uh, at breakfast this morning, we got to meet a couple of the guests that were that are staying at the lodge over here. And uh met a fella named Jim and he's been coming up here for a number of years and uh, 
<laughs> he had some interesting stories about this lake. He's fished a lot of it for uh, walleye, smallmouth, just about everything that swims on or in this lake. So I want uh, Jim to tell you his thoughts on this body of water. And uh, he's got some beautiful photos of some giant fish caught on this lake. Ready? Yeah, I started coming up here in 1997. I started coming up with my brothers and my dad. We gave it to him for a Christmas present so we could all get a chance to go fishing with Pop. So yeah. it's been a long time. It's been great. And now I bring all my buddies from Chicago. We just celebrated our 40th fishing trip together up here a couple of weeks ago. My family still comes, my brothers, my wife comes with me for a week. I fish with a lot of different people and I've met some of my best friends here to be quite honest with you. I'm primarily a walleye fisherman, but I've become really hooked on the smallmouth bass fishery here. Uh, I've started to fly fish a little bit because the fishery is so great. It's, it's really a tremendously diverse opportunity here, so I mean I really enjoy both. You know, and, and Paul is, I think, one of the key reasons we come here is the host. I mean, Paul Del Pino and his, and his family have become friends with my family. Um, I know his parents, I've been to their house for Thanksgiving. But as a host, Paul knows everyone. And, and for him to, you just feel welcome when you walk in the door. I, I pull up and it's, hey, Jimmy, where you been? And you know, good to see you. Sometimes I pull in and it's just, hey, how are you? Like I've never left. So that's really the key for me. You just feel welcome every time you come. Yeah, a number of years ago, Al and I were talking on the way up here and I um, got to come up to the Superior region and fish in the Nipigon area for um, brook trout. And uh, boy, was that fun. I mean, those fish are, they're like, I never fished for them before, and Dave Sand and I came up here, and it was just like fishing for smallmouth. These we were fishing in water just similar to this, and those fish were just ferocious coming up attacking baits. And we used a lot of the same baits that we used for smallmouth for those brook trout, coincidentally. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity in this region for walleyes, smallmouth, brook trout, there's uh, salmon, there's all sorts of different fish in this area. Got him that time. Nice. Got you that My time. hero. That, yeah, he, he, <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was going to beat me up a little bit, didn't he? Yeah, he's a flipper. He's a flipper. You know, in a world of, of, of bass fishing, whoa, Come here, come here, come here. In the world of bass fishing today, everybody is throwing, whether it's smallmouth, largemouth, whatever, everybody's throwing boot tails of some kind. It's the craze. You know, now we're on the craze. Everybody's swimming boot tails. This is a new jig from VMC called the Sleek Jig. A little, it, it's almost like a moon eye, and, and it's weighted a little bit different, but the hook, if you could take a look at that hook, the hook is incredible. Incredible for swimming boot tails. Yeah, you know, that's the sleek jig. This is one of their new toys, you know, for the year, and it's a good one. Guys are using it for walleye fishing, smallmouth fishing. Yeah, that, it's called Tech Set, and uh, a lot of R&D went into the development of that jig and that hook. Oh, how good. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. It, it's just a little guy that thinks he's bad. Oh, he's all right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, that's Boy, a he, fish. he thinks he's bad. Boy, he's got a lot of a spunk. Now, early in the year, again, again when you come up on these, these, whoa, oh, come here, guy. <laughs> you can't even get a grip on that fish. Okay. Early in the year, when we come up on these smallmouth trips, and, and we come up, up often to many, many parts uh, of, of Ontario and uh, that have good smallmouth fishing, in my opinion, uh, the region like, 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 like Superior Country and, and uh, Sunset Country, you know, both have phenomenal smallmouth fishing. But on these lakes that we fish, they, you only really need a handful of baits. In this early season time frame, smallmouth bass bait selection can be pretty simple. When it comes to horizontal moving lures, here are some of the best options. A jerk bait, like the Rappel X Rap, it's a must have. We prefer brilliant colors. Next up would be some type of topwater, like a Rappel X Rap Pop. 
Third would be a spinnerbait like the Super Stainless. A marabou jig is a killer at this time frame. The Storm 360 GT will always produce bites. A Big Bite Suicide Shad is another great swim bait rigged on a VMC Finesse Half Moon Jig. Now when it comes to vertical lures, a Big Bite Tube and Trick Stick will produce results if the fish are tight on cover and not willing to move. Another smallmouth, those fish are right off the edge of that break. Sun's coming in, going out, clouds are moving all over. Come here, young man. Oop, there we go, look at that dude on a hair jig. I'll get the little bub out, bust that dude out. One thing, boy, when you get those fish biting on those hair jigs, man, you, you stick them, you get them every time. That's pretty, there we go, look at that. Not a big one, but a little buck coming in, looking to uh, do some messing around. You know, over the years, we've used lots of multi-tools, pliers. You use them all the time because we're fishing with treble hooks and that, and a lot of times, from my experience, using different uh, tools like this, this little cutter right here would not cut braid clean like a scissors would. And this one, this Bubba blade, boy, you take that thing, look at it, you get the line in there, boom, it cuts it just like a scissors, crisp and clean. This sucker works. There we go. There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> not a bad one. Not a bad one. I really like the color of these fish out of this darker water. Yeah. It's that weird kind of tea stained water. It looks like it's dark, but it's actually clear. Get some big, big bass out of this stuff. It's fun fishing in this. Uh, Whoa, easy, easy junior mitts. Wow, yeah, got him. That's the nice thing about fishing with a hair jig, boy, you, you very rarely lose them. I mean, those fish come up and kiss the bait. The old bubba popper out. And you get them, boy, they get stuck mm -hmm. like almost every time. There you go, baby. Oh, oh, got him, got him, got him, got him. Feels good. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not bad. Not bad. The hair jig bite is super fun, isn't it? I'm throwing it. I'm swimming. Oh, I'm swimming boot, boot tail. tail. Well, they're yeah. just about the same. Now I'm a little bit faster than you are yeah. with this bait in the front. That's why I got you in the back. You know, we're we're throwing two different baits. He's throwing that hair jig in the back, fishing real slow. Yeah, you know, and I'm in the front, fishing a little bit more aggressive with the boot tail. <clears throat> but they're full, both kind of finesse-y. Yeah, you're, you're, you're finessing, but... Oh my boy, come on, baby. Is that that cane thumper? Yeah, that cane thumper there is one of the best boot tails I've ever used. It's a real, real skinny, finesse -y one. Yeah, you know, we catch a lot of fish. Yeah, that's a big bite cane thumper, and it's a thin one. A thin one. There we go. So, you got one. yours? Out deeper. Let me see it. Oh my gosh. I think this one's got a little bit of weight on him. Here he comes. Oh, I couldn't tell. Nope. Mine is bigger. Yeah. Mine is bigger. It feels, they feel tough on this, you know, because you're fishing with a spinning rod, spinning reel, light line. They, you, you, I guess you could say you get a lot of fight out of the fish, you know, for the, the action, the rod you're using. I got a way bigger fish than he's got. He's got a little dinky dow. <laughs> I got a good one. Little guy, come on. It was a little guy. <laughs> we'll take them all shapes and sizes. Yeah, you know, when you're finesse fishing like this, open face spinning is absolutely the way to go. The rigging is so simple. This is my favorite reel day in and day out when I'm bass fishing, whether it's smallmouth or largemouth. It's a 2500 ballistic LT. LT stands for light, tough, it's smaller, 
This reel is bulletproof. I mean, for any kind of shaky head fishing for largemouth, drop sh shotting, Nico rigging, a hair jigging for smallmouth, smallmouth swimming grubs, I use this reel for all of my finesse stuff. And this is one of the best rods in the, in, in the St. Croix line. It's a little bit spendy, I admit that, but I love it. It's the Legend X. And uh, uh, you take a combination like this, you're gonna have a good day on the water. And with these um, spinning presentations, we like to use uh, Suffolk's 832 braid, 10 pound test. And for the shocker down here, we use uh, eight pound Suffolk's fluorocarbon. And that is a pretty good starting point for any of your finesse fishing activities. Got it. Nice, right off the yeah. right off uh, the uh, uh, That looks like a good one, Al. I'm gonna talent this down here. When you get into shallow water, oftentimes we like the talent down versus spot lock because it kicks up so much mud and stuff like that. That looks like a better fish. That, Danny, you're on track. You're on track. Nice. Yeah. Un -da -da. Whoa. Whoa. Man, oh man, are they feisty. Holy mackerel. Good yeah, fish, nice water. fish. Yeah, nice fish. Yeah. Look at him, he's everywhere, doing their thing everywhere. Everywhere. It's a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, good fish. You are one feisty sucker. <clears throat> How's that one, huh? <laughs> you know, for, for uh, a day one, on a lake we've never been on before, we covered a lot of water. And we mainly, our plan today was to go fish these guys, brown bass. That was phase one. There's some walleyes in here, but we're probably gonna poke around on them. We caught like four or five walleyes today by, I'll call it by accident, fishing brownies. But the, uh, for, for our first day on cold water, mean, meaning water you've never been on before, yeah, no, they, these are nice fish. This was really, really fun. We'll poke a few more and go in and have dinner, Dano. Exactly. I'm getting hungry, man, after our drive up here. See what tomorrow brings. Hey, hey, have you ever sat and wondered, where do I get some of these absolutely insane thoughts? Where do these things come from? You're driving down the road and out of a clear blue, some goofy, thought comes into your mind and you got to shake your head. You go, where did that, where did that come from? It's like dreams. <laughs> They're really bizarre, but our thoughts are too. And, and, and some of them are a, a, a reflection of our worldview, how we look at things. And naturally that impacts our thoughts to a large, yeah, our large extent, our worldview, our experiences in life, what we believe in, what we don't believe in. Uh, 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 some things are good, some things are bad, and they impact our thoughts. And uh, uh, I thought I'd take a moment to share with you a little bit about how God thinks. Does that get your attention? How does God think? He tells you how he thinks. He tells you in Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, and 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's some pretty comforting words, isn't it? Words of encouragement. That's what that book is all about. That's what the Bible is all about. And it's so important to know a simple truth. God loves you, cares about you, and absolutely wants the best for you. That's why he sent us his son, Jesus. A confession of faith in him as our Lord and Savior, according to what the Bible says, says, guarantees you a lot in this world. And like many of us, you believe in an afterlife a heaven, which is a comforting thought when it's all said and done. 
Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. See you in the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.